I have been studying canine performance for over 25 years. My initial goal was to reduce injuries in the racing greyhound through understanding the forces placed upon its body while racing. Once we understood these forces, we could develop a racetrack design to minimize their effects on the musculoskeletal structure. Two additional benefits gained through this effort were developing training regimens that would prepare the structure for the rigors of racing and two, rehabilitation regimens that would improve their chances of returning to their previous level of performance. The pot to surface interaction was a crucial component in this effort. This interaction must provide enough traction to hold the paw to the surface and prevent slippage. We also found that the racing surface, which is a proper mix of sand, silt, clay, and water, could also provide some cushion that helped absorb the energy that occurs at surface impact. Although the force dynamics of impact are the same for all dogs, the surface type can affect how these forces affect the paw, distal limb, leg, and body. The goal of this project was to capture a high-speed video of a dog's impact on a hard surface more like a dog might experience in a normal living environment. We used an Olympus high-speed video camera capturing at a rate of 1,000 pictures per second to capture three views of the paw impact of a dog walking on a pressure-sensing walkway, capturing data at 500 hertz. The impact forces are produced when the foot collides with the surface. The forces of impact occur in three directions. The downward force or z-plane is related to the gravity. The forward rearward direction is described as the y-force plane. And the medial lateral or inside-outside direction is described as the x-force. The positional weight of the body affects how the forces of impact affect the distal limb. There are compressive forces on the medial and cranial aspects of the limb, while there are distractive forces on the lateral and caudal aspects of the limb. As the body moves through the stance phase, these force applications to the musculoskeletal system are transitioning, which results in a rotational or torsional forces being applied over the distal limb. Viewing the impact at this rate of speed allows us to understand that the force actions of impact are very complex. The pads make contact, but they are on the skin's surface, which is loosely attached to the structures underneath. The skin is attached to the toenail, which is firmly attached to the third phalanx bone in each toe. The digital muscles are attached to the second and third phalanx bones in each toe. So impact does not only affect the pads, but all of the tissue structures of the distal limb. The distal limb includes the region from the elbow to the paw. This includes the bones, joints, and ligaments of the toes, metacarpals, carpus, and the insertions of the digital flexor and extensor muscles. The digital flexor and extensor muscles insert on the second and third phalangeal bones. At the end of the stance phase, as the toes are coming off, the digital flexor muscles are strained because they are contracting while being stretched at the same time. This creates an eccentric contraction and is occurring at the end of every stance phase. The sensory nerves and the nerves stimulating the digital muscles are the radial, medial, and ulnar nerves. The mean conduction velocity of these nerves is 60 meters per second, or 60 millimeters per one one thousandth of a second. So many of the actions and reactions that occur during the stance phase seen in this video are happening faster than the nerves can react. This suggests that neuromuscular memory is playing a role as well as the structural limitations. This is why exercise and proper conditioning is so important in working and performance dogs. Reconditioning and retraining should also be included when developing a rehabilitation regimen. The dog moves the front limb towards the center of the body to maintain its balance. This results in the lateral aspect of the paw to first make contact with the surface. Then the rest of the paw comes into contact, creating an inward rotation or pronation of the paw. As mentioned earlier, this results in compressive forces on the medial aspect and distractive forces on the lateral aspect of the distal limb. The toes, metacarpals, and carpus are held in position as a result of the balanced activity of the digital flexor and extensor muscles, the interosseous muscles, the bony structures, and the ligaments holding the joints together. Although the paw is held in place by the forces of gravity and friction of the surface, the musculoskeletal system is still actively working to stabilize the limb while balancing the body for the duration of the stance phase. The skin hides all of the activity that is occurring in the actions of locomotion. During this time, the muscles, tendons, bones, and ligaments of the joints and the distal limb 
of providing both postural and locomotory efforts to maintain the structural stability, balance the body, and provide the actions needed for locomotion. I am hoping this video was helpful to those who have an interest in paw impact of the dog. Thanks for watching.